for those that are going all over the world. Uh, my name is Timothy Gerges. Um, I am a director of product management. We are going through the model assembly stuff for 2024.0 today. Um, and then at the end, I've got a nice little Easter egg, hopefully for 2024.1 um, or future releases. But it's a, it's a, I think it's something that is probably worth discussing today to get um, some feedback on because uh, it will be a significant change for connectors. So the first thing uh, we're going to jump into is there's been some additional options added to um, uh, the system creation for connectors. Uh, I know historically there is um, some a mix of options and a mix of results and a mix of things. So now if a user specifies to create a system, you can explicitly define um, the direction of the system that goes down the length of the connector. Historically, point connectors have been set to Y. Um, and bolt connectors have been set to X. For some reason, they were never the same. Um, so this is now being corrected, so the user can explicitly define which system that they want down the length of the connector that independently based on the control level. We've also additionally added a system selector option. So you can specify a system that already exists if you want to specify a system that already exists. This can be quite useful for the aerospace industry where um, you might have a predefined system for orientations that, that you want to reuse. So that's also available and directly um, accessible for all realizations that have uh, system creation. The next one we've added um, is the export format. Historically, connectors have had a series of XML formats, um, but only one of them has been historically written out into the Solver decks. That's always been XML1. Um, we've got XML2 and we've got other versions and other variants and other things. Uh, we've now added it so an, a user can explicitly specify what XML version that they want written out into the Solver decks. Now we've included XMCF. Um, this is quite a nice selling point. Um, so if uh, if you do have customers that are working in multiple preprocessors or you have customers that want to go between Hypermesh to FemFAT, for example, to interface um, their weld definitions for fatigue analysis, then XMCF is a nice option that effectively it's a pending ISO standard uh, XML format that is a agreed standard between various um, preprocessors as well as CAD systems. So it's a nice little addition there that, that kind of um, really kind of uh, uh, makes it more usable, integrated. And the only exception to this is attachments aren't supported within the schema for XMCF. That's because the, the schema only considers fully assembled bolts and, and spot welds and, and rivets and stack ups. So for attachments, we write them out in XML1 because we need a, a specific way of doing that. Thankfully, finally, um, this is one of the, a really big one for 20 or zero is we have now reworked all of the context implementations for all of the connector guide bars. Um, we now explicitly list nodes and node lists, lines and line lists. Um, so now there is no need for any more hotkeys. You don't need to hold control and shift and whatever to get the selection. You can explicitly say nodes. You can explicitly say node lists if you want to create a spot line. Um, and locations are supported as well. So if you wanted to snap to a random spot, that is now fully supported. We've added facets, features for area connectors as well. So you no longer have to skin solids to generate area connectors on a on a face you can explicitly now use the facet selection tool so um really nice enhancements are coming for the guide bar updates that should now standardize the selection we've also added connectors as a selection so if you've got existing connectors and you just want to apply a new control you don't have to double click or right click edit anymore you can go to editing connectors directly selecting them and then applying a control via the guide bar so again some really nice additions here to to try and um Fix a lot of the a lot of the outstanding issues that we we know we've had feedback on in the past. And the most probably controversial one for 2024, um, and the one we're probably going to spend the most time on going through today, 
is connector groups. We have removed connector groups in 2024. Um, they are a quasi component as they kind of kind of sat in this really weird space. Um, so now we have direct part association. So the connector can be directly organized into a part. We can organize it directly into a given subsystem. We have significantly cleaned up all of the organization options. So they are now no longer 15 organization options. We have two direct organization organization options, automatic and manual. So if I zoom in um, and we can generate some connectors here. Now, previously, um, I on some previous GTAs and releases, we spoke about um, organized into base component options. So if we just generate some connectors from some of these solids, we open up connector browser. Now, historically, you had to write split, and then there was an organizer, there was an automatic organized options that were embedded in this right hand side where those have been removed, a user can now right click organize to source part. So this will then organize the connectors into those parts that, that owned the geometry initially. So if you're trying to put your connectors back into your bomb structure, so you can then save those connectors as part of your bomb structure, that's how you can now very easily organize those back into the geometric part. Um, so for this case, if we select this part, Cycle it off the wrong thing. We just isolate this. Make the geometry see through. We can see that there are connectors. If I zoom in, we can see that there are connectors. And if we turn the part on and off, the connectors respond directly to that part. In the EE, we also show uh, that we it does own connectors as well. So if you want to know what owns your connectors, that's also available to you. So that's kind of the first uh, organization option that's now significantly sort of a lot nicer and a lot easier to, to manage. Um, historically, you had to organize it via a connector group to organize it via a thing to organize it via a thing. That's no longer necessary. If I bring everything back, come back out of parts into connectors, um, as you can see, we've added support for solids, lines, line lists, error lines. So error lines and now um, the last remaining piece for the aerospace uh, fasten tool migration that is now directly available within this context selection. If I, let me just split this out. Okay, so if we have two lines following the, the arrow line, let me just expand this back out and go to connectors. Selecting the two lines simultaneously, we generate one connector um, and actually let me just generate a control. So we can see the appropriate parameters that are being assigned to the connector for, for this implementation. So we switch this to Huth. I'm not going to realize it. We can see that the element, the diameter value is 2.08, which is the length of that secondary line that we've drawn at the top. Um, and we've got a de vector defined directly from the, the vector of the line as well. So the connector, the information that's provided by the line is consumed as much as possible that we can consume from, from the line information. So if you don't have that top line, um, which may be the case, uh, the tolerance is also taken from the length of the, the that blue line as well. So if you were used to that um, from the error line, that's what we do. If you only select the line itself, you can see that the diameter value comes from the control explicitly. So there's a couple of different things in here, um, but it means that we now should have full migration of that error we should have now have full migration of the aero fastener tool, um, which the aero fastener tool has now also been removed from the product. So if you search for fastener, it's no longer available in the search. So that's the the migration of the, the fastener setup tool. Um, if we go down into 
uh, locations, locations list, that's all pretty standard. If you've got an existing connector, you can now select a connector directly a lot nicer through the, through the workflows. Um, I'm going to switch back to, okay. So for the connectors we've generated before up here, we can generate, I guess, the remaining connectors. That's fine. Um, so let's just I'm going to delete these. I'm going to do this again. So in this case, we're just generating connectors for these um, these spots. There's a couple of thousand of them. And then we're going to go through the process of assigning a control, and then we can show the, the different organization options we've introduced. Now, automatic effectively remains unchanged. Um, so if you have, if you're using includes or subsystems, the connectors will organize themselves according to those includes and subsystems. There should be no distinct change from your process for automatic. Um, so in this case, we're just going to assign control. Okay. Now, if I wanted to, um, if we go back to here, we go to automatic, if I configure automatic single and automatic pair, that effectively goes back to the, the, the options introduced in 2020, where we'll generate additional subsystems according to the subsystems that the connectors are based off. So there's no additional setup from a user perspective for these. This will just create one subsystem for all connectors that join between different subsystems. And this will create a series of subsystems for the paired links that the connectors are paired to. So effectively one to two, two to three, three to four, that sort of thing. Now, if we switch to automatic, historically we had connector group, current part, current include, current component, component ID. It's now just manual. Um, we've uh, migrating connectors off as much as possible from component organization in the upcoming preparation for component removal. What you can do now that you were never able to do historically um, is in this case, I can select these connectors that we've generated and I can forcibly organize them into a given part or a given subsystem. So now if a user wants to organize a connector into a given part or a given subsystem, switch the, the, the operation to manual, Organize the, so organize the connectors. Now, if you organize a connector into a given part and then try to organize it into a given subsystem, provided that that part is in the subsystem, everything should work without a problem. If you organize it into a part first and the part belongs to subsystem one, and you then try to organize it into another part and the part is in subsystem two, we will break relationship with the first part and organize it directly into the subsystem because that's the second operation that you've done. That's the latest operation that you've done. So in that way, we're, again, we're trying to ensure that the connectors end up in the place that you've last asked it to be in. So in this case, if I go back to, I've just created a new subsystem. I'm going to close subsystem browser. Okay, we're going to select our connectors. And we're going to organize these connectors into a given subsystem. So now if we check the connectors themselves, let's say that they're now owned by subsystem four. So if we were to realize these connectors, we'll just realize a handful because there's no point sitting here for all of them to realize. We check the subsystem ownership. We can see that subsystem four contains those connectors, they've also contain all of the realization sets, properties, materials, anything the connector has generated is now organized into subsystem four. So if I go to part browser, we go down to the bottom, all of the realizations are now, again, all of the realization information. We don't organize any of the realizations into the base parts. We organize them into the connector realizations hierarchy. In there, you can see we've got subsystem hexacontact, which is the realization type, and then the name. Now, if this were to be organized by part, for example, you will see the part reference in the in the part name here. So it'll be the realization and the part reference. And this is to ensure that it will flow 
into the appropriate, effectively into the appropriate include at the by the appropriate organization method at the appropriate time. So if you want it to follow a particular part, organize the you can organize the connectors into the part, the part into the subsystem, the connectors will follow the part into the appropriate subsystem. All of this is really just trying to replicate, um, not replicate, but replace the functionality that connector groups offered, but also giving the user still the ability to explicitly say, this is where I want my things to go. The on flow for this is the removal of connector groups means that within the absorption options, there is the option to organize the connector to the realization part that is used to be by connector group. That's no longer possible. Um, so there's a, a small change to the absorption mechanisms here. Um, and again, the, a significant cleanup on, on the organization options that we have. So this is a, a kind of one of the really big pieces that we've introduced for 24 is, is, a, is a significant cleanup in, in the organization options. So there.